we're back. We we did it. We made it back to the basement, and uh, it's time to pave the hole, pave the pothole, fix the thing. Yeah, I got this T-shirt. Do you like it? But seriously, we have to get to work there. Steve Weiner from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to do a follow-up to the autopilot hole which was the offline JSON and basically taking non-corporate devices, slipping them in as uh, managed corporate devices, right? Um, so this was a little bit of a problem. Microsoft patched this. So we're going to look at how it was patched and what we could do as an alternative to uh, take existing devices and get them into autopilot. And we'll have to figure out the name. I don't really like patching the hole. So, you know, that might, it, it doesn't roll off the tongue. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so I'm gonna put a link below to the last video. Um, basically, we'll kind of just recap what happened. Um, this was the autopilot configuration, uh, the JSON file. And if you take this, and if you just make one of these yourself based on some tenant information, um, some random GUID you can make here, um, essentially what would happen is you can put this in a brand new device and I'll show you because I'm going to do just that Explorer. I took that file and I'm going to put it in C Windows provisioning autopilot. I'm just going to drop it in here. Okay. And by doing that, uh, let me give this a quick reboot. Now that that file is on there, hopefully we'll breeze right past that reboot. All right, so we're just gonna go through with the process here. Um, and just to show you, this is not an autopilot registered device. Let's get the serial number here. It starts with 4615. So if I go to our lab, go to Windows, Enrollment, Devices, uh, there is no 4615. So it is not here registered in autopilot. So let's keep going, close that. Basically, this just has the uh, JSON file put on. All right, so if you look at that, um, it booted right into what would be an autopilot um, autopilot uh, login. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in, but uh, we're gonna take a look at what happened. So I'm gonna probably speed this part up. Okay, so what happened here, the device got in um, because of my conditional access policies against that rule, it's not getting anything. Um, but I do want to show you, it still comes in here under, um, where is the device? Desktop P4. So it's up here and it still shows up. Um, and it says corporate. So it will still come in as corporate. But the interesting thing about this is Microsoft changed their rules, basically saying, um, you can't be blocking personal devices for this to work. Now, why is that interesting? That's interesting because even though it's flagged as corporate, we're gonna test that to see if it'll block it if I'm blocking personal devices. So we're gonna do a few things. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset that device so we can try it again. I'm gonna obviously delete it from here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and the device has been reset. I deleted it from Intune. We're gonna go to uh, Windows Enrollment Device Platform Restriction. And we're gonna go to Windows Restriction, All Users, Properties, and I'm gonna edit this. And I'm gonna uh, block personally owned Windows devices. Okay, and what we're gonna see here is I'm gonna go back to this. I dropped my JSON in and we are going to give this a shot here. Okay, so because of the JSON, it's still prompting me from my works, uh, my work account, because it still thinks it's an autopilot device. But let's see if the block personal does anything. Okay, it didn't let it in. The organization has not used this feature. So even though it shows as corporate once it's in, personal is now blocked, so that's a good thing. Um, so there you go. If that's a thing you don't want in your tenant, you just block personal if you want to get rid of the uh, offline JSON enabled devices. So now the question is, let's say you don't want to allow offline JSON, but you want to take existing devices, which is why people were using this, right? Take an existing device, put the JSON on so it becomes an autopilot device. How can you still do this? Well, we can 
make it officially autopilot by creating a script. So instead of dropping the JSON in, we'll run a script on the device and we'll post it in autopilot ourselves. So it'll be up there officially and it will be linen as a corporate device. So let's talk about how to make that script. I made a new uh, PowerShell script called autopilot register. So let me just break down what we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna authenticate authenticate to MS graph and we're going to create an app reg with the permissions we need. We're going to get uh, hardware info. We're going to construct JSON and we're going to post the device. So let's start with authentic authenticating to the graph, right? And we're going to do this just like we would do for any other, um, any other script. Okay, so that's our usual client ID and you know you put your client ID in there and your secret and your tenant ID. Um, so let's go ahead and create that. We're going to go to the entry portal and we're going to create an app reg. And you only need one permission for this. Um, so this shouldn't be too crazy. You're going to need, we're going to go to app registrations. We're going to go to app registrations, new registration. We'll call this autopilot registration and just hit register. Okay, you have your client ID or application ID. We'll copy that. We'll put that right here. Okay, next we're going to go to API permissions and we're going to add a permission. And the app uh, permission is going to be Microsoft Graph application. And we're going to search for device management. And we want device management service config. Read, write all. Add it. Hit grant admin. Don't forget to do that. Otherwise, you won't have the permission. And then clients and secrets. New client secret. We'll call this autopilot secret, whatever. And this is the only time you'll get that. Copy the uh, copy the value, not the secret ID, the value. Okay, and you put that right here. And then of course our tenant ID, we could just get from overview. Tenant ID. Okay, we're all set there and now we'll be able to be authenticated. Next step we'll need is the hardware info. Okay, you'll need uh, two things for the hardware info. Serial number, and you'll need the hardware hash or the hardware identifier. We'll just call that hardware ID. So we don't have to spell more than we have to. Uh, get WMI object. We could do class win32 BIOS serial number. Oh, we don't want the variable. We just want a serial number. That'll give us the serial number. The hardware ID is a little more complicated. It's get WMI object, namespace, root, simv2, mdm, dmmap, class, mdm, div, detail, x01, filter. I know it's getting wild. Instance ID, x and parent ID equals dev detail okay and then after the first parentheses you want dot device hardware data and that should be it so that's going to give you both things and optionally if you want to add the group tag this would be your time to do it so i'll do m365 and that's everything we need now we have to take all that and construct the json okay so for the JSON, JSON's always a little tricky. Um, there we go. So it'll be at O data type. Okay, at O data type is Microsoft Graph dot imported Windows Autopilot. device identity group tag 
group tag, put that right in there, put the variable in. Serial number, you see we have all these. Serial number is serial number. Product key, uh, this is a value you need, but we can just leave blank. The value has to be there. Uh, the, 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 the data has to be there, the value can be empty. Hardware identifier equals hardware ID. Signed user principal name is another thing you have to have there, but you don't need anything there. And then state. The understate we can simply do O data type Microsoft Graph imported Windows Autopilot device identity state. State device import status it's going to go in as pending that'll change by itself device registration id that'll get generated by itself device error code uh that could just be a integer and device error name nothing there Okay, and that will be it. So now that we have the JSON, we just make the post call. So this is um, an invoke. Invoke rest method. The method is get, uh, sorry, the method is post. The body is JSON. Content type is application JSON. And the URI is https graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash device management slash imported Windows autopilot device identities. And lastly, we need headers, and we already constructed our headers. Why did that show that? Okay. And what this will do if we run it on a device is this will post it for us. Um, during any kind of sequence you want to run, or you can push this to uh, offline devices. Oh, sorry, you can push this to existing devices, and it'll put them in autopilot. And I'll make this available in the uh, in the GitHub for everyone. All right, well, there you go. I guess that was the big thing with the offline JSON is folks needed a way to take current devices and get them in there. But now with that, you know, whole patch, you can block it with personal. It's probably not a good idea anyway because it's not a true autopilot device. Now you have a way to make it a true autopilot device. So um, grab this from the GitHub, jump in the Discord, ask any questions. And, uh, you know, we're back now. So a lot of new stuff uh, coming this week and we'll be seeing you.